get my phone to work to um, answer questions, pause and answer questions as we go. Okay, tonight I want to talk a little bit about um, the secret to feeling alive again, why we feel kind of dead and numb inside and what we can do to start to um, bring ourselves back to life. So I've created a um, quick PowerPoint to kind of help me navigate, help me stay on track. Um, okay, why we have, first I wanna talk a little bit about the mind-body split. So what happens when, if you're feeling numb or like uh, empty or like their life feels pointless to you, you don't know why you're here, um, you're doing all the things you are, taking care of the kids, you're, you have a job and it, it's a meaningful job and, and you know, you have a partner that you care about. Uh, maybe you're active in your church, but you're just like, I just feel like I'm walking through the motions. I'm not really feeling anything that I'm doing. I'm just doing for the sake of doing um, because it's what I'm supposed to do because I'm obligated to do it because it's what makes other people happy. Um, what happened, what the reason we feel numb inside um, if we're doing all the things, but it's not bringing us abundance and joy and happiness, then we have what um, is called a mind and body split. So your, your, your mind and your thoughts and your actions are not connected with your feelings. Um, so as children, when we develop, the first form of comfort that we get is, is physical integrity. Our, we're physically soothed, right? We need uh, milk to stay alive. We need that nourishment and blankets to wrap us. And we feel the comfort and warmth um, of being physically connected and soothed. Um, and then if you are upset or crying as a baby, then, you know, you have a parent who strokes your back or gives you a quick hug. Um, or as toddlers, if they're really acting out, they're yelling and screaming, then, um, you know, if you have a, a parent who can, who's maybe a little more connected than some, then that parent is able to, you know, use your words. What are you feeling? Talk it out. You know, they're able to be patient with that child and help the child process and, and be able to connect like, okay, what is it I'm feeling and how can I verbally communicate that? Um, a lot of us didn't have parents that were not able to do that. And it, and it is generational. Typically their parents didn't know how to do that and their parents didn't know how to do that. So some of us started learning very early um, their emotions were not acceptable. And so they had to shut them down. They had to send them away, not be able to process them. And what that does over time is it, is it allows us to not, you know, our mind to not be connected to our body. So at first, maybe it's only with anger or sadness that we're not allowed to express, but then over time, we, we don't know how to connect to happy, either happy, joy, um, all the, the good feelings. So you know, if you had, if you're somebody who's had a lot of compounding trauma, starting with um, being in a home where you're not allowed to express emotions, and then, um, you know, maybe you were abused or some other really big events happened on top of that, then, then there's sort of, it's, a, it comes a point where you don't have any ability to reconnect your mind and your heart. Um, you know, this is on a continuum. So if you've had a few significant events in your life, but you've also been able to express and process emotion, then maybe just around certain events or certain topics, you're not able, you have that split. So let's say, you know, if your parents got a divorce and it was a fairly amicable divorce, but it, divorces are still painful for kids, then it could be around relationships that you struggle to stay connected with your mind and body because there's some unresolved emotion or feeling around um, marriage or divorce or intimate relationships, um, you know, things like that. So there could be some, some of us who have some areas of life where we can recognize that we're not able to fully connect to our emotions. Um, but then many of us are not able to ever connect to our emotions because we started learning at an early age, not to, that they were too big or too scary. We didn't have the tools to know how to process emotional experiences. We didn't have parents who were able to train us to, to understand and express our emotions in a healthy way. Um, so that's sort of how it starts, how you end up in this life where you're going through the motions of doing all the things that you're supposed to be doing, but you don't feel anything that you're doing. All right. So we're typically forced to pick one. Um, we when there are mind and body splits, we either go to our mind and we numb out our emotions, which is definitely what I did for many years. And most of the clients that I work with are also in that space, just 
I don't know, it's usually because that's who I connect most with, or we go into our body and um, express emotion, but we're not really conscious of what we're expressing or why. And there's definitely a lot of people who bounce back and forth between both. And uh, there's definitely been periods of my life where um, I went into body expression without really thinking about what I was doing. So I'm not saying it's like a 100% either way, but there tends to be one pull that you're more comfortable with. So you either more comfortable with numbing, but when you feel emotion, it goes all the way to this extreme where you're like super acting out, you're getting really, really drunk or you're cutting or you're doing something, some, some form of risky behavior, or you stay kind of in that risky behavior category um, and then you snap over to feeling really numb and you go back and forth. So typically somebody who's had a lot of really compounding trauma is stuck in one of those poles. Okay, a little bit about stress response. A lot of people know it. I just want to talk about how it sort of plays out here. So um, the fight response is a body response. So, uh, you know, the examples here, hyper alert, startle, flashbacks, nightmares, there's high adrenaline. Um, you're ready to go. You're in your body and you're ready to attack. The freeze response is more moving to your head. You're numb, you don't feel you're in denial, you avoid, you withdraw, um, you wanna be alone a lot. Um, so here's what I like to, to help. One of the first things that I like to help clients remember is that you know a lot of times people feel a lot of guilt and shame because they, maybe they're saying, I have, you know, and I did this, I have this beautiful life, I have beautiful children that I love and, and I have a home and a job that I love, like what's wrong with me, why? Um, I'm, I must be a really bad person um, because I, I don't feel happy. I feel sad. I, I, I don't feel connected. I feel empty inside. And, um, you know, if you think of your life like a movie, like somebody is sitting and watching a movie and they saw this event and this event and this event and this event, and they saw these are the ways that you were not able to be connected to emotionally, then it would make total sense if they're watching this movie that they arrive to who you are right now, that you're disconnected and you feel numb and you don't know um, how to feel. Like somebody would say that actually makes a lot of sense, right? Or if you're somebody who um, has big anger outbursts or big sadness outbursts and um, you're people are telling you you're crazy or you're reacting too much. But actually, again, if you look at your life like a movie and if you have all these things that have happened with no um, response, with no processing, then of course, you know, if, if your husband says some little something to you that makes you feel sad or hurts your feelings, then of course you're gonna have a big response to it because you're not just sad about that moment, you're sad about all these other things. You know, we can't feel sad now. We can't not feel sad for things that happened and only feel the sad for now. If there is unprocessed sad, any little sad in the, in the present will trigger all the sad from the past. And the same goes for anger. Um, you know, any of those big emotions that we haven't processed. Um, so this is another, probably the biggest key, why it's so important to do the work of grief, um, of processing our past experiences so that we can live fully in the present. So I made this chart, feel free to screenshot it. Um, so it'll be healthy, I mean, uh, helpful. <laughs> um, what we want is to be to live a healthy, balanced, grounded, abundant, joyful, free life. It's for our emotions to be about events that are happening right now, not any and that don't uh, are not connected to past events. So we've processed enough of our past where, if our partner comes home and says something that's hurtful, unintentionally hurtful, then we can be hurt and sad or angry about that moment right there. But it has it, it doesn't get connected to any past events, you know, or if we're tempted to connect it, then we're able to understand like, nope, this is just about right now. Um, so we want to, it's not that we don't feel a wide range of emotions. We should be able to feel a really wide range, range of emotions. We just want them to be about what's happening right now and not about um, anything that's happened in the past. So if you're like me and you tend to be somebody who's stuck in your mind and not feel your feelings, um, then you feel numb all the time. You don't connect to anger well. 
you don't connect to anything well. You just want to kind of withdraw and be alone and stay numb. What happens is our body is just the container for those emotions and it stays stuck inside and it doesn't have a release valve to come out. So um, our body starts to express the emotion, uh, the emotion in a way, the only way that it knows how, and that's through um, chronic pain, disease. So here that's, you know, I'm not saying that everybody who has fibromyalgia, high blood pressure, somatic cancer, I'm not saying that everybody who has these, it means that they're numb and they're not processing emotion, but when it comes to people who've experienced a lot of trauma and the trauma is unprocessed, these are ways that our body starts to express the emotion that's unexpressed over time. Um, and again, on the other extreme, if you're somebody who's stuck in your body, you feel too much, you feel a lot, you feel out loud all the time. Um, people can, maybe you've heard you're a lot, you're overwhelming, um, you rage, you have paranoia then what, what you're doing to your body is your stress response. What happens when we are in our fight mode is um, all of our organs turn off except for the ones that are necessary to keep us alive in that moment. So you're turning your digestive system on and off, on and off, on and off, your immune system on and off, your reproductive system, um, your frontal lobe. So you're not able, over time, if you're constantly turning it on and off, then it, it doesn't know how to regulate itself and you start to have problems within those systems because um, they don't, they're not able to function in the way that's consistent. Um, and it, it starts to break down over time. Does that make sense? Okay, let me check, make sure there aren't any questions. Nope. Okay. We're good right now. All right. We're going to keep going. Okay. I wanted to talk really quickly because this is something that women, pretty much every woman I know struggles with this at some level. Um, and it's normal. It's self-blame is a way for us to avoid going to grief. Grief is one of the worst things we can experience. It is such a helpless feeling and it is normal for humans to do absolutely anything to avoid having to feel grief because we hate the intolerable feeling of having no sense of control, having no sense of, uh, you can't really grasp it, it's so helpless. Um, so we can avoid feeling the grief of, um, childhood events, childhood pain by saying, well, I'm a, I was a bad kid. It's my fault. I didn't do this. I did do that. Um, if we can blame ourselves, then it, 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 it's sort of like an addiction of not having to go to feelings. So I know as a therapist, um, people can be really tricky with um, when they're starting to get into their feelings, then they will divert my attention by start talking about something they did or um, their personality, or they'll find some way to divert my attention as a therapist away from feelings. Um, so uh, it's important for a therapist to be really well-trained in trauma and understand this is a way of trying to not have to feel the feelings that are coming up because they're so uncomfortable and they often are really big because they've been sitting there a long time and building and building. So. Um, it's important um, if you're starting to do this work to think about what didn't happen and process what didn't happen rather than what did. So maybe the protective parents that you didn't have or the loving supportive husband that you didn't have, or um, you know, a lot of times it's, it's what we didn't have that brings more grief than maybe what did happen or what we did have. Um, and a lot of times it's both. So if you're abused, obviously you have some grief around what did happen, but then you also have grief around the protection that you didn't have. Um, so that's just one way to kind of start thinking and processing. I will say that, um, you know, if you have had a lot of really big traumatic events that you know that you're fully disconnected from your mind and your heart, um, 
you need a professional to start getting into the work of grief because it is really big. It's a pervasive pattern that you've had to develop out of survival since you were very young. So in some ways, you I want you to feel um, a sense of love for yourself that you, your mind and your body found a way to survive um, the unsurvivable, right? That you found a way to keep going and keep moving forward. Um, so that's something to be really proud of. But now you're older and it's time to, um, you don't have to survive anymore. You don't have to live in scarcity anymore. And if you really want that abundant, joyful, free life, then we have to stop and pause, stop blaming ourselves or anybody else and just do the work of grief. And it sucks and it takes a lot of time. Um, but here's the way I look at it. Helplessness, emptiness, emptiness and feeling numb is my is maddening and it feels so helpless because there's no end you may have everything like you have the life that you thought would bring in some sense of purpose and you don't feel it and you feel guilty about that but then you're like there's nothing else I can do I've done all the things and I still feel empty there's such a hopeless feeling processing grief is really painful really really painful and really hard but it's productive pain. You're doing something, you're digging out the past, you're moving on, you're, you're, you're letting go and releasing. So while the, both are hard, but one, that empty numb feeling has a sense of hopelessness with it, where the grief, while it's so hard and painful, there's productivity in it because you know that you're doing what you have to do in order to fully let the past go and bring in some of that feeling and abundance and joy. And it really doesn't take that long to start to be able to connect your mind and your body back together. So the grief takes a while and it never really fully stops. Like I still have things that trigger my uh, sadness and grief, of course. So it's not that like, it's totally done now and I'm fine, but I live most of my days now in a really abundant, free, happy, joyful place. Um, where I can set goals and think about who I am and what I want and, and go reach for new things um, because I've done most of the grief and processing work in the past. So anyway, if you, just a little bit of motivation for, for saying um, no to your drug of choice and moving forward. So a lot of people don't like the word addiction, but it really is if you um, are avoiding feeling your feelings, uh, maybe you dissociate, maybe you numb out, maybe you, um, you know, whatever it is you do to, to keep yourself from feeling, you keep yourself really busy, um, you over-involve yourself in your children's life, you stay at work too long, whatever it is you do to just keep going and not feel is actually a form of addiction. It's, and um, in order to start to you know, it's important we have to start desensitizing ourselves and start to feel those feelings. And again, the motivation is once you've felt them all and processed them, then you're able to bring in. You can't keep anger and sadness away and pull in happiness and joy and abundance and freedom. All the big emotions live in one place, right? So if you're going to push out the big grief, the big anger, the grief, the big sadness, you're also pushing out joy, freedom, abundance, happiness, uh, feeling fulfilled. So, and that's kind of where that emptiness comes from. So you can create a really beautiful life that looks perfect, that looks amazing, that you're su super successful at work. You've got kids who are, you're, you know, who are active and you're with them and you're doing all the things. But if you're doing all the things and you feel empty, then that simply means that you have some big stuff in the past that you haven't processed, that you're keeping it at bay, you're keeping it locked behind a closed door. And that is also where your abundance and joy is locked. If you want to bring in that fulfillment, that that freedom, abundance, and joy, then you have to unlock the door and feel the feelings. Hard work, but worth it. Okay, I wanted to add this slide in here because um, a lot of us repeat the patterns that were taught to us. So if you have kids and you've ever said to them, stop it, don't be a baby, don't cry, 
why are you acting like this is such a big deal? This is not a big deal. You need to relax. Those are all ways of minimizing their feelings. And while we may not think that their emotion matches the moment, and maybe it doesn't, but doing minimizing it like that does nothing more than teaching them to ignore their feelings. And you are actually training them to also disconnect their head and their heart. Um, you're repeating a generational pattern. So um, we've all done it. I've done it. Definitely felt guilty for it. <laughs> um, so this is about grace and forgiveness. And when you know better, you do better, as Maya Angelou says. So um, it's important to manage our own anxiety, manage our own sense of frustration when we don't know how to deal with our kids' feelings and lean into the discomfort of helping them navigate um, getting their mind and their heart reconnected, you know, staying connected together, if that makes sense. So helping them be able to articulate the big, strong feelings that they're having and um, kind of wrestle them and pull them into themselves so that they can manage them and feel them and express them in a way that's appropriate, in a way that um, is understandable for them to get their needs met, for them to be able to express what they need and then receive what they need. And that's what keeps them in integrity. And that's the, that's what we're looking for, right? And that, that means that as they grow up and mature that their mind and their body are in integrity with each other, they're connected to each other and they're able to then create that abundant life that we are seeking that we haven't been able to achieve yet because we you know didn't have an opportunity as kids to keep that integrity and we're working on it now and rebuilding it so all right hopefully that's helpful um in parenting okay that is it i hope you found this helpful um, I know that I definitely enjoy it I love teaching I love sharing um, what I've learned and what I understand about trauma um, as many of you know, I had um, a lot of trauma in my past. I lived for many years in a really numb, broken, dead inside state. And um, I had a lot of therapists that just didn't know and didn't understand trauma um, and, and didn't know how, like what was, you know, it, I, there were not any behaviors I could do that would help me. It's a matter of pausing, like, cognitive behavior strategies, those are not really going to help. It's about being able to tolerate feelings that have been intolerable for years, processing grief that you haven't ever let yourself feel. And then uh, once those feelings are sort of processed and dealt with, then those good feelings start to come in. And then um, when you can tolerate your really sad feelings, then you can tolerate your really happy feelings. And when you can tolerate your anger, then you can tolerate your joy and abundance. And that's when the good stuff comes. So a really integrous person has a wide range of emotions, can feel them all the time, and they are mostly based in what's happening right now and in the hope and joy for the future. Okay. Um, I would love to have a chat with you if you want to talk about your story, ask questions. Um, I've pinned at the top of our group uh, it's actually not in this page, it's in my group page, but I'll put it in this page. You can schedule a free chat with me for 30 minutes and we can talk through your situation. I also have some journal props and prompts and different things that I can send you if you want to start processing um, your grief and your feelings and start connecting, bringing some understanding to what's going on within your body that you've disconnected with. I would love to help you. That's what I'm really passionate about. All right. Good night from Shanghai. It's morning in the West. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later.